Ahoy there! This is the first video in my Destiny 2 Deep Lore series, a series where I look at the more obscure references and pieces of information in the lore and world of Destiny, and do my best to bring them to light. As the title of this video states, this video will show how the dialogue in the Presage mission continues the gradual reveal of the character known as the Winnower. Now, if you've seen any other of my Destiny lore videos, then you know I've been researching and following this character for quite some time. The most recent video I've made referencing him being released at the same time as this one, so go check that out. Alright, enough rambling from me, it is cool montage time, let's go. What makes the Winnower as a character so fascinating is how shrouded and concealed they are, and also their relationship with the Pyramid Ships. In a separate series I made called The Eldritch Theory, I laid out my case for the Winnower and the Pyramid Ships not being the same, with the Winnower being the sole ruler or wielder of the Darkness, and the Black Fleet being servants or followers of him. However, the majority of the Destiny player base, even several other lore meisters out there, and the characters within the world of Destiny do not believe this. They are under the assumption that the Pyramid Fleet alone is the darkness. This is exactly why the Presage mission is so important to me. It introduces us to a completely different environment, first of all, than that which we would associate with the darkness, and the dialogue within the mission involves the gradual realizations of both Osiris and Keitel that perhaps the darkness might be more than they thought it was. All the dialogue contained within this mission is very good, but for this video I've handpicked a few especially good lines that I'll show and then explain. First line, let's go. A glorious chain of dark minds, an open mouth for the one in the darkness, that it may sing in exaltation of my majesty. A key argument for the Winnower being separate to the Pyramids was the type of pronoun both characters use. If you go back and watch part 2 of the Eldritch Theory, or just go watch any clip of the Pyramids talking to us, you'll notice a pattern. The beings within the Pyramids always reference themselves using plural pronouns. So for example, we are your salvation. We offer only truth. At the same time, the Winnower is on record to have said, I am, by all accounts, the winning side, and my man Oryx. As you have heard from this voice line, the pattern is continued. The one in the darkness. What is even more interesting is that both one and darkness and many other titles for this reference character have a capital letter at the start. What this shows us is that we are dealing with one character and a character of great importance. Okay, line two, go. Greatness recognizes greatness. To invoke the attention of the end, our offer must be great. This is more of a fun fact than anything else. So the word END has a capital, which I've already explained why that is, but why is the character called the END? Well, it all goes back to the Winnower's logic. It's basically the sword logic, but I'll just explain it. He believes that only strong life should be allowed to live, and that if you're weak, then you should die as to not hinder and burden the strong. Here's the problem with that logic. In this universe that both the Gardener and the Winnower created, there will never be anything that is strong forever. At some stage, everything will become weak and so deserve to die. What is this character the end of? Ultimately, the entire universe. And that, my friends, is why being Dark Guardians isn't smart or cool, it's just edgy. Line 3, you're up. Callus's scribe identifies a voice in the darkness, one of their mother, of dead enemies, of ghoul. They say it spoke to Callus in his own voice, taught him how to commune. In the singular, and both voice and darkness have a capital. Already explained that. Cool. So what's special about this? 
Well, this line by itself, concretely, without a doubt, distinguishes the Winnower and the Pyramids as different characters. When the beings within the Pyramids communicate with us, not only do they speak using plural pronouns, but just pretty obviously, they speak in many voices. Here, it is clear that what spoke to Callus spoke as one voice. It may have been in the guise of different people at different stages, but it was always one thing talking, if you get me. Nice. Line 4, proceed. As counselors work to isolate and contact the entity that speaks. Alright, just wanted to say that the title of entity is used later on after this, and I am simply noting that this is the first time it's mentioned. Same things from the previous lines apply to this as well. One character of great importance. Line 5, move out. Our Emperor hears the voice of salvation. Rejoice. The theme of salvation is a common link between the pyramids and this entity, and I could probably go on for a long time trying to explain what salvation is and means and all that kind of stuff. But let me just put it like this, right? If you think that because of this link, that this is proof of the pyramids being the darkness because they've said salvation a lot before, then I will say this. I am currently in the process of translating slash cleaning up the voices of the pyramids and one voice line states that the truth of salvation was given to them. I will release that video, I'm hoping for next week, I'm not finished the editing just yet, but that's the time frame at the moment. Um, but I am certainly of the opinion right now that the pyramids follow the logic of this entity, it's not the other way around. Line 6, speaketh. It allowed the darkness to invade the scorn's thoughts of the darkness. The entity. The two are entwined. Does the difference matter? That there is a difference makes our understanding of the darkness a facade. This line is the big boy, and it's easily my favorite, as it finally reveals what I've been saying for a while. I'm in college at the moment, and I can tell you for a fact that English is a load of waffle. One thing I learned about that I did find interesting, though, was the term unreliable narrator. It's basically when you get information from someone about something they don't know fully about. Let me give you an example. A murder mystery book, or a show, or something like that. A character might say, oh, they did it. They might genuinely believe what they're saying, and they're not trying to fool you. But you, the viewer, reader, you know not to take that at face value until the author finally reveals who did it. I once had a message telling me that the pyramids have to be the darkness because the characters in game say that they are. Exactly the same logic applies here. Spooky pyramids show up and everyone assumes it's the darkness. They might genuinely believe that to be the case, but this line shows a realization that perhaps they were wrong. Let me break it down for you. Keitel claims that the darkness entered the scorn. Osiris, like the other human characters, he believes that the pyramids are the darkness and so automatically says no, it can't be the darkness. Remembering that other line, he defaults to saying instead it was this entity that he had heard mentioned like five minutes previously. Now, now this is interesting. Keitel responds saying that the darkness and the entity are intertwined. Does the difference matter? This ties in with the final line I'll show you, but what's interesting about this is that Keitel's response shows us and Osiris that her idea of what the darkness is and Osiris's idea of what it is are different. They're both not on the same page, but they're both not stupid. They both have had experience with this. Osiris realizes this and realizes that there is more to the darkness than he thinks. Now, people I certainly didn't realize this until I was actually writing the script, but just I want you to know, he never says, you're right, it was the darkness that went into the scorn, or argues back saying, no, the entity is different. This is because Osiris is an extremely intelligent character, and when he realizes that he knows less than he thought he did, he realizes he is in no place to make claims about something he doesn't fully understand. So instead, he spits facts. Our understanding of the darkness is a facade, or as I like to put it, we have no idea what we're talking about. What does this exchange mean? It means that just because your ghost tells you something, you shouldn't assume it's a fact. 
The characters of this world are unreliable narrators, my friend, trying to discover the truth the same as us. And this conversation really shows it. Final line, it's time. Seeks the entity who speaks through the darkness. The darkness is a primal force, wielded like the light. How simple. Able to be brandished against Zebu or Ra? And fall into the burrow of an ambush predator? I think not. But tools can be broken, forces can be stopped, and those who wield them can be disarmed. This also ties into something I've said in the past. The darkness and the light are just energy, the tools of higher powers, and Keitel and Osiris discover this at this moment. What I also find interesting is Keitel's notion of disarming those who control the light and the dark. In the fourth and final part of the Eldritch Theory, I personally predicted that we would truly make our own fates and destroy both the Gardener and the Winnower. Could this be a hint towards that? I honestly don't really know. I will let you decide that. What I'll also say, I referenced this line in the previous in how Keitel has a different belief of what the darkness is than Osiris. Her saying that the entity and the darkness is intertwined, could she possibly be leaning more towards the idea of a character like the Winnower being in control of the darkness? Perhaps. But anyway, that's that. That's how this mission continues the gradual reveal of the Winnower. If you enjoyed this video and would like me to make one about something specific, please leave a request and it will. A fine addition to my collection. <coughs> With that being said, thank you for your time. Take care. Alright, welcome to the Cool Kids Club. This is a place reserved for those who have watched all the way to the end of the video. You guys are legendary heroes for doing that, and I really thank you for that. In the lounge, we sit back, we relax, we go off script, and we just chill. We just talk for a little bit, like 30 seconds. I'm planning on uploading this video on Friday, late Friday, and this is currently... Well, I'm not going to say what day I'm making this. I'll let you theorize about that. But I plan on streaming on Saturday, the 12th, I believe, of June. So if you see this, and it is before the 12th of June, like I said, leave a comment if you want to make a request or just talk to me. At the same time, though, if you want to talk to me directly and get instant feedback, more instant than leaving a comment, join my stream on Saturday. Uh, subscribe if you want to get notified, and we can do that. We can have a chat, we can theorize, we can debate, we can do all that. So you, just to let you know that I am streaming on Saturday, and you are more than welcome to join me. We're just going to chill and have fun. I don't even know necessarily what I'll do. So with that being said, that brings us to the real end of the video. You guys are amazing. You are probably the best community I've honestly seen on YouTube. I'm not just saying that. You are, in my opinion, the best community I've seen a YouTuber have. And I am very grateful to have people as kind and awesome as you. I thank you for spending your time on my channel and this video. And to all of you, my friends, take care.